Hello and welcome to another week of Energy and Star Sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We're looking at the week of November the 2nd to the 8th, 2020. And as you can see, I have a guest today, a fellow shamanic healer. Laura, is her name, is her name is pronounced Jean? Yeah, we'll go with Laura Jean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, if, if you use another name, this is the time to let me know. Soul Solace is my page. So, okay. Yeah. So, hey, what, what I do, as you know already, very often you see names, you know, our names here, and then you just go in and, and check out, you know, who we are, if that makes sense. Okay, so before we do anything, we always look at the overall energy. What I need to say before we even go there is that I noticed that a lot of people lose their empathy towards each other. Simply because there's just too much restrictions on them, they're worried, a lot of people lose their livelihood, so they go inward to look at themselves. And remember this, your energy is everything. If your energy is low, that's what you attract. So, for everybody who's watching this, who's interested in, in getting messages, always remember that anything the guides say to you, works much better when you realize this is not the end right life continues always has always will so take a deep breath like this just relax and begin to trust that things will turn out all right here's another trick if you exhale with a f sound you use the abdomen air instead of the lungs so for people like me the asthmatics <laughs> that is, it makes a big difference also you can get this exhale which is basically setting the intention that you are ready to continue your journey if that makes sense so the longer you can keep the out breath so to speak the better the universe understands you. Okay, so just want to say that. Let's have a look at the overall energy before we go into the first star sign. We're now in the star sign of Scorpio, but let's have a look at the overall energy. Years ago, um, I used to do all my readings without cards, but I used to live with the Irish. And in order for me to get my, I have to look at people. And then the Irish are like, stop staring at me, mister, you're freaking me out. <laughs> so I said to the, to the guides, okay, well, you have to help me. And over the years, the last sort of 20 years since I actually used cards, um, all I ever got was four decks, and each deck has their own guides. But there's one deck that is basically the guides just talking to me. And I hardly ever use it. I feel though this week I want to use what is in that deck and the guides that govern this deck to talk about the overall energy. Right? So shall we have a look? Here we go. <clears throat> yeah, makes sense. We have vulnerability and happiness so you know it's just what it says on the tin if that makes sense i just mentioned this <clears throat> and this is the way of the of, of the guides confirming it we all or most of us feel quite vulnerable right now and right next to that feeling of feeling vulnerable which people feel is a low energy feeling vulnerable can also be very neutral because when we feel vulnerable we notice that things need to change and it's really powerful, you know, heavy people don't change, <laughs> if that makes sense. It is when you feel, okay, something is a bit off, that's when you look into healing. And we have happiness as the next step. So what the guides are saying is, if you can have, sounds a bit weird, but that's what I'm getting, a mad half hour every day, it goes a really long way. You know, before we started filming here, um, I just got some water and... Um, I was sort of compelled to say to Alexa, play Motorhead, and she was like, oh, she's a bomber, bomber. So I had my, my, <laughs> my mad half hour, which lasted about two minutes. <clears throat> but the point is, whatever comes to you, you do. Mm -hmm. right? So that's the first message, as the overall energy for the week is to realize that this is going to be a week where you will feel vulnerable. It will be reflected in the messages for the star signs, whether or not you're a star sign that has to step back, or whether or not you're a star sign that has to um, look at it. It will all come out, if that makes sense, as we go deeper into the star signs. But, main message here, do not despair just because you feel vulnerable. You create energy. Love is the highest energy you can create. Happiness is not far off. Happiness is an inside job. 
If you go like, yeah, I'm having a great time, it doesn't matter. Oh, I just lost my job. Yeah, I got free time. <laughs> right? Rather than say like, sorry for swearing, fucking hell, what now? You have never lived under a bridge, right? Never. And you have lost jobs before? You look, look at this this way. You haven't been under a bridge yet, and it's not your journey. You will be looked after. Yes, it is upsetting when things happen that change your life, but it's remembering that you are an old soul. All of us are. That's what the guys are telling you this week. Focus on your happiness, because in this climate, this unprecedented times as we call them, we need it. So that's the over energy for all of us to apply anything that we hear with that over energy of, of acknowledging, yes, I feel vulnerable, but I will be as lighthearted as I possibly can. Okay? So, as you already know, I talked for England, so that was another long-ish introduction. <laughs> and now we're going into the first star sign, which is Scorpio. So we start with Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So what I'm picking up here is there will be situations where there could be potential truths or illusions being being destroyed or something that might have been um, uh, a normal for quite a long time um, finally showing revealing itself for its true colors it could be a case of removing the rose tinted spectacles in a way um, uh, and the creation change, but I think the change is needed and it's going to be positive. Um, there's also, it could be in the way that uh, when we look further into the truth of who we are, um, that it creates a change that makes us become more balanced because it has the energy of 22 here as well. And there's a lot of balance theme, I think, at the moment. So similar to in the vulnerability, when we admit our vulnerabilities and when we're able to say, okay, this is where it is, this is where we can transcend the moment and the, the energy of that to create a change which will allow us to move on. So it's kind of a case of letting yourself feel what is deeper within the emotion that's at the surface and get to the truth of what the matter is. And sometimes just admitting that is uh, way less scarier than it seems. Yeah, yeah. And also it goes hand in hand with, with the feeling of vulnerability. Why not look at stuff? So that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you so much, Deborah Scorpio. Going into Sagittarius. Here we go. Let's have a look at Sagittarius. Sagittarius, quite an easy week, if that makes sense. <clears throat> like I said, the overall energy is the energy that the universe presents us with. And Sagittarius, Sagittarians, mm -hmm. I know there's some, anyway, I don't think it's, it's, I think it's Sagittarians, not Sagittarius. Anyway, I can't pronounce S's, so I hate that anyway. Okay, well anyway, to cut a long story short, you have the coyote and the dolphin. What they're saying to you is, this week, please do not worry. There will always be enough for you to go around. You will be looked after. The coyote is a scavenger, which means he doesn't go out and hunt. You know, if he can help it, he's a scavenger. And that requires him just to use his nose and go like, okay, well, there's something there that I can take. So opportunities will come to you. New beginnings. That's what I'm feeling strongly for Sagittarius. Says. <laughs> Sagittarians. New beginnings are coming. And you will just be fine. And you have the dolphin, which is important because this is about, again, we had that, we are oftentimes with overlapping energy. We just had the same, slightly different, but the same energy in Scorpio. Because now we're looking at Sagittarius and you have the dolphin. The dolphin is an animal that because he always looks happy, which basically just has, this is the, the truth is he has very few muscles in his face. So he cannot look sad, if that makes sense. And so, so people assume wrongly. The analogy is that you might, you know, try to make the best of a bad situation and smile through it. And the dolphins could, technically speaking, take on a shark. Well, sharks are not bad animals. There's no such thing. But remember this, if a shark, you know, uh, comes anywhere near a dolphin, Obviously, there will be friction, and the dolphin can take on the shark. And what that really means for Sagittarians this week is to stop smiling. 
through situations that you know aren't working. It will not solve anything by keeping the peace. So it's important to realize that they didn't say that your opponent or the people you deal with are sharks, right? It was just an analogy. <clears throat> I don't feel it's going to be that difficult. But in order to bring about change, you need to first mention it. And by you just adopting the situation, well, okay, it's going to be fine. That's what you need to stop doing. Otherwise, you will be trapped in that life. And remember, it sounds a bit weird, but you allow, to a large extent, what's happening in your life. So change is really important. And don't be afraid because you have a lot of strengths. Okay? That was Sagittarius going into Capricorn. white raven spirit which is trusting in the magic and this card for me is very much about being aware of the messages and the symbols and signs that are all around you and it's um i want to say it's a case of feeling at home within the world and even though the situations might feel like they are rocky or unstable and you don't have your feet on the ground properly or um, you're not sure where the next move is coming from or you're not able to see a future vision. It's kind of getting used to the fact that the universe is looking after you at all times and uh, it's there for you. You just need to be present enough to look around and then feel like you are always held and always secure. So there might be that kind of instability that comes up, which might, you know, shake you up a little bit and, and make you feel ungrounded. But if you are noticing that there's a lot of magic going on and kind of trust that every single sign that you see is meaning something and nothing is a coincidence and that you are always being guided home and that the universe is your home, the world is your home. So even though there might be some insecurity, allow the signs to come to you through various things, people, uh, things that you see to show you that you're being looked after and to give you a bit of safety and security. Okay, yeah. that was Capricorn. And remember, one of the messages that, that we're getting is yeah. for all of us to be in the now. Mm -hmm. We always say that people go, you know, what is now? Now is everything. Yeah. It's that simple. Now is everything. Now is also the time where you can make change. You cannot change your past, right? You know what I hate on Facebook when people say, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I really don't. I'm in the now. I don't plan ahead five years because if I planned ahead in five years, just as, as for instance, if I just said, okay, in five years, I want to have a bigger flat or a house, right? I, tr I then very likely will begin to resent what I have because I'm looking for something. At, a, at one stage, yes, it makes sense to, to, to manifest more, what I'm trying to say is that in my experience, when people are manifesting, they then become restless because they're manifesting and they don't allow the universe enough time to deal with it. So I'm not saying don't manifest, yeah. but what I'm saying is, it's no point saying like, well, I tried to manifest this a year ago and nothing is happening. Right? It just brings you down. And so that's really important just to realize this. So in my experience, don't put the timeline on it. Yeah. You know, just say like, that's what I'm gonna manifest. So that's what's going to yeah. uh, happen. Even but if you don't see it. Yet. Absolutely, yes. When you really don't important. see it, it just means that things are rearranging. Yes. And that by looking yeah. for signs. I just hate all this number thing, you know. Where do you see it in five years? Why why is it not two years? Yeah. Well, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, don't you know, put limitations yeah, absolutely. on how and when you know? it can happen. And you can see this week because we're stressing this year, the guys stressing this year, is it's so important to let go of these preconceived notions. Mm. People say that to us, I don't know if they say it to you, but they said it to me all the time and I had my stall. We met for the first time probably eight years ago. Yeah. She was beautiful then, I was slimmer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, I'm not beautiful now? No, you said you, you, were, you were still beautiful then. <laughs> so, and we met at my stall, I had a, had a stall in Erdington, where I, where I did my, my readings. That's how long we've known each other. Mm -hmm. And people basically asked me there if I would know next week's Lotto numbers. 
If I would know next week's lotto numbers, I would win it all the time and the butler would open the door and say, Thomas is ready to see you now. You understand? Yeah. It's pointless. Also, people manifest money. Money is not a spiritual concept. So don't manifest money. Manifest what you want. Manifest what you desire, if that makes sense. Right? And you can ask for stability, financial stability. But if you ask for money, all sorts of restrictions come to it because it has been handled by so many souls. Right? Mm -hmm. So this might not, um, not be related to any star sign, that's why I'm sort of mentioning this. <laughs> but one of the things that I get with the overall energy, being vulnerable and create happiness, is to not be governed by all these old ways of thinking, if that makes sense. Life, even though it is not easy, is by no means as hard as it could be, mm. right? And that's another thing to, to um, really drive home, if that makes sense, you know? There's, there's drinks here, there's candles, there's a roof over the head, you know, it's all, exactly. it's all good, right? Exactly. So that was that for Capricorn and me, going off on the tangent as I often do, now we're going into Aquarius. Here we go. And I get an extra guide for Aquarius. <laughs> I love my guides. The first thing they talk about is financial stability. <laughs> it's funny. We have the bighorn sheep. And even though there are no real money cards in, in, in Native American symbolism, that makes sense, the bighorn sheep denotes I'm an animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and don't fall. And it has to do with the universe looking after you, which in many cases always means financial stability because we, we happen to live in houses that need to be maintained and paid for. So what the guides are saying to Aquarius this week, don't worry, financially we got you. Right? They could have just said that. Could have saved me the four minutes before that. Right? <laughs> Here's the other important thing for Aquarius. You have the buffalo and the ocelot. You need to make sure that this week, while you feel vulnerable and you're trying to create a new reality, you need to have boundaries. Really, really important to have boundaries. Your own personal space is yours. If you feel people invaded, you have to tell them that it's not on. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting because the guides give me um, imagery. And it's really simple imagery, uh, actually uh, imagery of love. I see an elderly woman that has her grandkids. And the grandkids are nice, but so demanding that she really can't do anything. And what I'm getting is, is when she has a, um, a cup of tea in her hand, she's like, see this cup? It means me time. Play on your own for five minutes. Right? <laughs> and so that's what they're giving me. This is really funny because my mum is an Aquarius. Oh, and there's okay. uh, some dynamics going on. Oh, there. okay. It just really reminded me of that. I had to show her that's really... Okay, <laughs> there's no coincidence. No. Right? But, but remember, you, have, you need to have some boundaries because also when you don't acknowledge that you're getting, um, weak is the wrong word, that you're, what you're, you're getting more tired, it tires you out. People, by default, you know, if you cook for me five times a week, I let you, I become an opportunist. They're not bad people. They work on your energy. And if you pretend you're actually all right, they keep coming if that makes sense. So that's all really important, right? So you need boundaries, Aquarius, Aquarians? <laughs> Aquarians. Okay, and then you have the ocelot, which means you already started looking at yourself. It doesn't mean you never looked at yourself, but it feels like already you feel, okay, there's something here, they're showing me the, the sternum where rejection sits, there's something here that isn't quite resolved yet, so you're beginning to feel that things need to leave that have had an impact on your life, which is why you need that time. But the ocelot is an animal that looks for a vantage point. The depiction I have here is an ocelot, you know, on a branch trying to get up on that tree and the tree represents your life. So the guides are saying is you have already made progress in your life. All you need to do without changing your kindness is speak up and you're going to be fine. But it is imperative for you to state when you feel tired and when there are certain things you just can't cope with so well. So everybody who is involved can then look at, okay, maybe there's another way of doing things. That's all it really is. Communication is the key for Aquarius, Aquarians. And now going into Pisces, my star sign. <laughs> it's always nice when I don't have to read it. Your own one. You know, because sometimes the guides make this about me and then I have to extrapolate. <laughs> why, why you, you know? 
So that's, so that's nice. Anyway, like I said, we're looking at the week of November the 2nd to November the 8th, 2020. Okay, here we go. With Pisces. Pisces. Okay, so we have Cat Spirit, um, the number 13, which is colonial independence. And I have the money card. So this speaks to me really about taking the lead um, with your own path and not being particularly um, swayed or um, bought into collective or group ideas at this point. It's more about going forward with things that have always been within your, within your heart, within you know a vision that you might have had a long time ago. I think now is the time to break away and go for that because there's could be a lot of abundance in there. Um, the money card of independence also kind of feel like there might be some rest involved here as well because the cat likes to rest a lot there's mm. always that time of, yeah, yeah. of being alone and maybe it's the case of being alone to be able to um, cultivate more of these ideas without without just really um, the distraction of a lot that's going on around you because time some people say that this time is money, but um, you, sometimes to attract the abundance for yourself personally, you really do need that time alone because there's so much energetic and people needing our help out there. And if you're one of those people that um, people lean on you quite a lot, especially in these times when there are a lot of vulnerable people, um, just make sure that you're getting that, that time for yourself because there's a lot that might be coming in for you at this point, especially in Scorpio when the, the veil is quite thin and the Pisceans, it's a watery sign as well. So there may be a lot of flow that's coming to you that you can pick up on that will be important for moving forward and for making the next steps and to you know make plans for yourself. So I think you need that time alone at the moment or just make sure that you uh, allow for it or set time aside to just uh, be with yourself and, and let, the, um, let, let visions and ideas and things like that come because also, that's how you uh, bring your vibration back up and back into center. And once you are really, truly yourself, you are able to attract and manifest again what, what it is that's for you. Um, when you split in too many different directions and there's a lot of time and attention being taken away from you, uh, that chance of magnetizing the things that are just for you becomes decreased. So it's a case of uh, yeah, getting the energy up and just really doing the things to indulge in the things that you like, maybe personally on your own, um, so that you can yeah, align with what's for you. Good. Sounds good. Yeah. I was listening intently, <laughs> so it's good. <coughs> Excuse me. That was Pisces going into Aries. Let's have a look what we got for Aries. Okay, you have the beaver and the grey squirrel. Which means your week is not going to be too difficult. Nothing really majorly upsetting is in the energy of your star sign. You have the beaver, though, which means you are the builder of bridges. You are the person, in many cases, that provides the glue for the people in your life. And therefore, you need to look and watch your own energy to make sure that the, build, the, the, the bridges you built are steady, right? You also have the grey squirrel, which basically just means that in order for you to make changes to your life, it's pointless having 25 ideas a day and not stopping to collect them. Mm. Right? So what I'm getting for Aries is it's important to realize, yes, you are needed in the lives that you live. The image that they give me is actually of, of mothers. Mm. That's what they give me as, as an image. Mothers who have mothers that they look at and, um, <coughs> and kids and somehow they're the glue. But sometimes, you know, trying to please everybody, trying to make this all work, is not really your job. You understand that? Or you need to understand that because that's what the beaver is about. He still needs to swim away to get the stuff to build the bridges. Mm -hmm. right? so, you, so what they're saying to, to um, Aries this week is have some time away from everything and trust that things will not fall apart because at the end of the day, you're there. And this time away, this is why I'm leaning back, it's just to detach yourself here. Um, more ideas that actually make everything work um, can come to you. It's also interesting because you have the beaver, which means you are the beaver, um, which really means it is 
something that you said you would do when you came here to say like I want to be the glue that holds things together which which suggests a lot of trauma in your past or your family line and abandonment and all the guides are saying is this is not the time to be depressed this is the time to say like well whatever happens in the past we had it earlier the past is the past I can't change it I'm in the now I'm looking at the now I um, look into cultivating new ideas that's why I'm stepping back and things will just be fine so the energy for Aries is not a heavy one which is good and now we're going into a bit of a stubborn star sign which is which is Taurus nice star sign. <laughs> oops <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay so the energy we have here is uh, the parrot which is about watch your words and also uh, the trouble so there's a pot here with uh, some steam and, and a lot of things brewing um, I think at this moment in time usually as Taurians people can um, also look on from these people as stable people and places to go for for advice but because I'm picking up on this uh, uh, independent streak and also the time when people we have our own vulnerabilities uh, I think it's a time to be careful to not speak out or project on people um, because actually you might not be in the position to give advice or to be there for people so watch what you are saying in terms of uh, don't react and it might be better uh, perhaps people will actually come to you with their problems a bit too much so because of the energy of being so scattered it might be that you're not taking the usual time or the presence to be able to uh, relate to people in a way that you normally would so be careful which conversations that you're getting into and do you really have the energy for them um, and on the other side with yourself watch the words because the energy is so changing and if you feel less grounded than than you normally would um just be wary of what you're telling yourself uh where there might be a tendency to kid yourself or you know maybe skirt over some issues um and make light of things that perhaps you need to be a bit more gentle with yourself at this point so yeah just be careful and uh, how relating in all ways to yourself and to others at the moment because of the current uh, energy might be a bit a bit all over the place and people kind of yeah in that vulnerable spot as before mm -hmm. and and yeah and lean towards happiness as well but you know do that in different ways maybe you know um singing and dancing and things that will yeah. bring back down to earth and connect with earth without you know looking towards others so much because it might be a time when there's a lot more confusion and a lot of uh, yeah worried energies yeah. And you notice people are attracted to your energy because the more vulnerable they feel, they can sense you're just that person that they, that they find. And a lot of the star signs, a lot of you know, spiritual people who are watching this, mm -hmm. it's my experience with deep people, that sensitivity cannot be switched off. Mm -hmm. And so people find you, even when you feel like, oh, for crying out loud, I need some me time here. You know, you could sit on a, on a bench somewhere and someone opens up. Yeah. So it's just the way this is because that's the energy we're carrying. I personally um, feel grateful to have that. Mm. But there were also times where I had to sort of, you know, get on my bike and just go like, okay, I'm going to the chase and I'm not talking to anybody. And I wasn't rude. I just couldn't deal with it, if that makes sense. And I, and I get this because we're still sort of talking about Taurus, Taurians. Yeah. Um, it's really important to not feel guilty if you feel like, you know what, another time. Yeah. Really important. Yeah. Right, uh, people always feel rejected, especially when you have been giving forever. <laughs> they will always feel rejected, but you know what? They live, they come around. It's that simple. Sometimes it's a lesson that's needed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for to, sure. To remove the words and the cancel allows people to go within and, and do yeah. that work for themselves sometimes. So, also, you're still being kind by just, yeah, and it doesn't matter if they, quiet, if they get it to be fair. A bit quiet, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that was Torians going into Gemini. Drawn to a different deck. Here we go. You have the scarab and the peacock. That is basically just a message to look at yourself and realize how important you are. 
The scarab is nothing else than the, than the dung beetle. It's just a, a fancier term because the scarab has been, has been revered in Egypt for a long time simply because this little guy can lie dormant for years without passing away. And then when the soil changes, you're like, okay, time to roll shit uphill. <laughs> <laughs> right? So in other words, you may have been lying dormant because nothing really happened mm. for you. And now that you realize how important you are, because the scarab is also an insect, and in shamanism, in Native American, uh, every, every, every animal has a message because you look at their lives and then say, like, okay, what do they do that can tell me something? And without insects, nothing would grow. Absolutely nothing would grow. So overall, the scarab is an, is an insect. So number one, they're saying to you, pay attention and, and allow yourself without ego to say like, yes, I am important. And even if you're just important to yourself, use that knowledge. You are important. You have purpose without looking for purpose, if that makes sense. Right? <clears throat> so that's the first thing they're saying to you. And then you have the peacock, which means this is also a time while you look at, yes, I am important, which means my well-being is important to me, Gemini's. You have the peacock. The peacock has this beautiful wheel, right? And that attracts a lot of, 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 of people who are like, oh, this is really beautiful. Mm. Guess why he puts that up? Because the, the, the wheel has a thousand eyes. He puts it up to scatter his enemies, saying, look, I'm a thousand people, I'm a thousand peacocks here, right? So he tries to keep things at bay. And so sometimes you, you, you put up that wheel, which means you are the best version of yourself. You are almost flamboyant. And all it does, it doesn't allow people to see that you would need time to recharge your batteries. Mm. Right? But also because we're talking about the peacock, which means it's a, it's a, it's a response. He, he puts that up every single time something is a bit off. <laughs> that makes sense. So it's a response. Mm. So they're saying is you have already built responses uh, to scenarios to try to keep the peace, keep things at bay. And the message this week, really for Gemini, is to stop being so forthcoming. Again, we have that in a lot of star signs lately. <coughs> being too forthcoming because you're not looking at your strengths and you deserve to have more strengths. Right? That's really all I'm getting for Gemini going into Cancerians. Let's have a look what we got for Cancer. And we have that every week or every time we record an episode, you notice this, we have a lot of overlapping energy, mm. which is also difficult because sometimes I gotta go like, when I do this on my own, have I just read this star sign, you know? And then you realize, no, it's a different one, right? So here's Cancerians for you. So we have uh, Jester Scales and we've got the Crow Spirit, which is co-created spirit. Um, so crow is um, a messenger, it's a, a very intelligent animal that really does have the ability to communicate quite well with, yeah. with humans and it has a very, um, it has a very broad way of communicating and it also recognises, doesn't it, humans and it can follow and all that kind of thing. So this it, to me is about um really trusting and allowing spirit to guide you at this time because there may be um there's a lot of this the justice energy is about finally coming to balance and dealing with a lot of kind of karmic things there might have been things that are building up uh where you've put a lot of plans in so spirit now is really coming in to support you with that and make sure that if you're listening and really listening um you know the 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 real signs will be the loudest is what i'm hearing here so uh the things that you can't deny or the things that are just consistently messaging please make sure that you're um taking heed of them or acting when when that arrives because um it feels like they might be very close right now to allow you to achieve something that might have been there for a while and bring you really into balance and into this place where you can actually start to achieve something that has uh, been you've been trying and, and wanting to happen. So spirit is really supporting you. It's just a case of definitely allowing not just um, 
not just listening, but definitely acting with it because the more you act, the more signs that you're going to receive and the more help that you're going to get on the way. So um, yeah, you're definitely in the right place and uh, it feels very, very close to spirit. So just, yeah, follow the signs, follow the signs and act on them as well. Okay, that was Cancerians. We are left with Leo, Virgo and Libra. Um, so Leo is next. Let's have a look what we got for, for Libra. We have the wolf and the fish. Okay. There are different types of wolves as normal, as usual. The imagery that I'm getting from my guides is the timber wolf, which is obviously they're all pack animals, but this is, so to speak, the, probably the strongest of the lot because we have the, the red wolf, which is the Ethiopian wolf, who lives in the desert where things are more difficult because there's just more harshness, there's less opportunities. And then we have the Arctic fox, or the Arctic fox, and the Arctic wolf, rather, um, where the same applies, there's not that many chances, and they're giving me the timber wolf, which means for Leos this week, you need to be in charge. And you need to lead. You can't lead when you're aggressive, you can't lead when you're annoyed, you have to be in your, in, this is the word I'm getting, in, to, in the center of your calmness. Really be calm. Know that what you say makes sense. Right? You can explain things very well. This is the week for you to lead. And I'm getting projects, I'm getting work, I'm getting also, I'm getting relationships that is in the background, if that makes sense. So this is the week where Leos look at um, who they're dealing with, um, with regards to work, if that makes sense. Um, that's, the, that's what I'm getting the strongest. Um, and it's time for you to speak your truth. Mm -hmm. And it, it, they're, they're, doing the, they're opening the door and you have to get your, the foot in the door. Because you know my, my guides are older than words. And um, being German, words are overrated, believe me. <laughs> right? So that's what they're saying to you is be in charge. And you have the fish. The message of the fish is that you need space. Very simple. Um, because we have fish as plural, fishes, <laughs> so it's not a specific fish, it's, it's fish as an entity. And you need some, some space, which means if you could look into creating scenarios at work, for instance, or with people where you explain, for instance, what needs to be done, and then everybody just, do, just does their, their part, without having to say things 25 times, right? Sometimes, as nice as it is to have a herd immunity, <laughs> it's really important. Yes, you lead the pack, but you don't follow them around and they don't follow you around all the time, right? So create this independence by explaining well and lead the pack. That's what I'm getting for you. It actually doesn't feel that difficult. It just feels like there's some little glitches in people understanding you. And you, this is the word, or the thing that they give me is, you, you, you don't start off right. You, someone says something, you already know, and you're going, oh. so don't, don't toot, don't go, oh. right? That's not, a, that's not a good way to start a conversation, <laughs> right? Just be in the center of your calmness, right? You have your own thoughts on things, have them by all means, and then see it from their point of view. Maybe they ask because they're really at a loss here, mm. right? So even if you have said it five times, no harm saying it a sixth times, the sixth time if you ask for this. But create some space and allow everybody in your life to have some space. Because all fish live in water. You're all connected. You're also all related, if that makes sense, energetically speaking. Mm. So and you can all still choose when you need that space. And this is the week for Leos to create that space. For yourself and everybody and anybody in your life. Okay, that was Leo's going into Virgo. I was just getting the, uh, the image of you doing the breath then at the beginning. Oh, okay. So well, that's probably a good idea. It's yeah. to, it's to take a breath before before, yeah. before you speak yeah. in order to say the right thing and not have to get exasperated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going into Virgo, our second last star sign of the week. We're looking at the week of November the 2nd to the 8th, 2020. This is beautiful. Um, 
So we have the B and uh, the Lust card, which is really speaking about passion. It has a volcano on there. And the B is about sweet results that await. So what I'm feeling here is that there has been a lot of activity um, over a long time. I'm also really picking up on the moon here and there's a, it's a full moon, isn't it, around that the Taurus full moon, the evening before and that weekend. Yeah, I think so, so yeah, I have to so look that up. <laughs> the energy of that may be carrying on and as Taurus is uh, ruled by Venus, another thing which is probably tapping into um, uh, this sensory delight and also with the bee to me, it's really about, I mean, the bee moves from flower to flower and spends its life, you know, just doing something probably just very very pleasurable and uh, having a little sleep in a flower and then is actually creating while it is enjoying and and just in, enjoying its life completely so there's a real kind of energy of um, using passion and, and just passion and really going for what you're enjoying at the moment and sticking to that and not veering off course um, to just just really pleasantly get things done and um, I think the energy is really supportive for Virgos around that week to be able to to be able to just move with that and and quite indulgently I feel getting along with it and getting results from following that passion and just getting involved and and uh, being maybe uh, a bit of the socialite and and spreading that energy and, and buzzing around and connecting with the hive um, to stir up and generate uh, projects as well maybe that might be um, to connect everybody and help other people plus yourself, which will be um, a really kind of nice feedback loop of realising that you as a person uh, can change a lot with your energy and don't doubt either that, that what you bring will affect a lot of people. So, and I think it's one of those weeks when you will really see that and that that knock-on effect can really help others to shine and also create things collectively. Okay, I also um, <clears throat> just saw when I connected to the card that there's a seven on it. <laughs> and seven is the highest number of protection. There's obviously a lot of stuff in numerology, but you probably recall that um, a couple of months ago we did the uh, Saint uh, the, the Saint Michael's healing grid. And it's really simple. I asked you to cover me to the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, from above, from below and in the center. So it's seven times, seven times, seven, seven healing. And because seven is also... Here, it means while you're going about your life passionately, which sometimes can bring vulnerability because then you're really you. Right? Mm, yeah, what the guides yeah. are saying is, Don't you're worry. protected. Yeah. Don't worry. Really, really important. Yeah, I, wish you, I wish I would I would be Virgo this week. It feels yeah. like, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, is the, yeah. This, is, this is your week, if that makes yeah. sense. Really, really important. Yeah, I just want to mention this because mm. the moment you started talking, that seven yeah. really came here, yeah. right? So, you know who's a lazy kid? Me. I don't want to do uh, the last star sign Libra, so I'm asking you to please do Libra oh, first. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. I like these cards. Don't worry, it's not that I don't like you here. My, 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 but these are, these are actually really nice. Thank you. They have a very good energy. Yeah. Very nice energy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we've got um, the growth card. And also the nightingale spirit, which is, says love is all around. Um, there is a really beautiful picture of, um, of uh, what they called an old, the old school, gr gramophone. gramophone. Yeah. And um, to me, this is, there's a lot of green here as well. And I feel that this is really about connecting with the heart and going back to the vulnerability is the ability to receive is also not it doesn't always have to be something physical it's to understand that you can receive love if you just uh, allow that growth and expansion of the heart energy um, this is where we can tap into the field of uh, the support from from all the people around us the people in our networks the people that really care and that once you can do that you you can only really Feel and experience the loving prayers and the energy of somebody else that they have for you once you allow yourself the growth and the experience so you have to accept that because actually you might have had this kind of uh this closed off energy which just really is 
refusing to let it in but once we do and the nightingale is the, the singing bird so it's it's like being able to hear that in the um in the ether that it's really there for you um if you just um take the time to listen and open up so there's some growth involved right now which is allowing the expansion of the heart and to realize that there might have you know it was probably only yourself um, while you were going through any kind of phases um, that you know thought for a while there wasn't enough love for you to to carry on but there's a there's there's a lot there and it, this was just growth for you to allow to expand and open your heart and receive the antenna that uh, that will uh, allow you to feel that again and experience it and feel supported much nicer as, as, as if I had done it. So perfect. <laughs> that all suits me. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining me oh, here. Yeah. That was awesome. And um, remember, I say that here all the time. Subscribe below. Please subscribe at the YouTube channel. Also find us on the um, the Facebook page that, that you can see here. And first and foremost, this is all free of charge. We're taking the time out just for you. Please keep sharing. Really, really important. That's the idea. The more people who find it, the more people get messages and hopefully get some guidance. Right? So please, please keep sharing. Laura, again, thank you so much. That was yeah. awesome. See you all yeah, soon. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Hang on. Yeah, it's still on. Of course it is. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>